my voice isn't doing very good, so I'm going to do my best to, to, uh, to, to read, but it might be a little quiet and scratchy. But I titled this the, the, t the Ten Tribes Will Return because there's nothing anybody's going to do to stop this. And the reason uh, many people will get punished is because they're not judging the cause of the fatherless and the widow. And you can go to such places as Isaiah chapter 1 and Isaiah 66 to see um, what God thinks of Judah, uh, particularly in not feeding the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, they're supposed to know these things. And um, there's other places it'll say, it'll talk about how the house of Israel um, committed adultery and then treacher her treacherous sister Judah went about uh, doing the same thing, which made her even worse than Israel because the northern kingdom of Israel, um, it was seen like they witnessed it happen. And then they went out and did the same thing. So and that's what we see even going on today. I've seen, I've witnessed, you know, a lot of, even in the, in the synagogues today, they're saying, oh, it's okay. The Christians can do Christmas and Easter and all that crap. Because that's all it is. It's all ancient pagan Baal worship or Nimrod worship or Osiris worship. It's all the same. It just changes depending on the language of the country that you're in. And, and here we are in the, in the uh, Nimrod language. So at the Tower of Babel, Babel, God scattered the languages to the nations. How's it going, Andrew? Uh, he, he scattered uh, the languages to the nations because, and, and then what's, what do you think Satan's been doing for the last, the, these last years? He's been bringing all the, late, all the nations back into one language right now, which is really a sign of the end as well. It's also very um, important that that happens because the Ezekiel watchmen, are going to warn the lost sheep of the house of Israel in their language. And the, that that's because they're scattered to the four corners of the earth. It's a, you know, it's pretty easy to hear that when you read that these watchmen are going to warn the lost sheep and the lost sheep will hear, you know, the, those who are appointed for vessels for destruction aren't going to hear. And it's because of the hardness of their hearts. I witnessed it. There's a guy named Paul Bagley. You guys might know him just rebellious. Just he's just full of his own conceit and just, you know, proclaiming from the mountaintop. He doesn't care what all those gringes say. He's going to do Christmas and he had such a great time with his kids and stuff like that. And, and he's one of these false watchmen. He's not telling people to repent. He's telling people that they're, that, you know, that the, a, a meteor is going to hit the earth. He, they don't, un, you guys got to understand something when these false pastors these they're called dogs you know the dumb dogs beware of the dumb dogs you know and um and they're gonna just they're just gonna warn you of this this and that is coming to the earth and the government's doing this and the government's doing that and you know are you serious you know like that's the way the guy is um just hanging on to the traditions of the apostate christian church good morning karen just hanging on to the traditions of the apostate church. And I'm going to read the scriptures about this. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a bit long. And, and this is how amazing God is. And I hope you can hear this. That way back in Leviticus 26, which is the same thing as Deuteronomy 28, about the devouring of the northern kingdom of Israel. And really, just so that I, you know, cover all bases, not all of Judah was return to the land even in the in the times after the Babylonian captivity there's a difference between the two houses the, the the southern kingdom was conquered by Babylon and a lot of them stayed in Babylon and this is the end days prophecy of the Chaldeans okay they're running the world the Chaldeans and they are against all of God's people although they they are part of God's people by blood they are they turned into, into wickedness um, trying to run the world. And they're the ones riding the beast. And they got a lot of systems underneath them that are infiltrating your schools, your churches, your governments, your, your banks, everything. Okay? Hey, Christine, good morning. So I'm starting at Leviticus 26 to lay the foundation 
for how powerful God's word is. When he warns us not to do something, he is not joking. And this is where we confess the sins of our fathers and what they did. When we're waking up, it's prophesied to happen. And this is where it begins. God, for, this is his testimony. You're going to see this in 2 Kings chapter 17 when the lost sheep of the, or when the northern kingdom did what they did, which was the Asheroth pole, okay, which is Christmas. They would not um, hear the testimony, which the, the spirit of prophecy, you know, the testimony of Yeshua was the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of God through his prophets is the same thing because Christ was always talking about what the prophets already talked about. Once you start to learn that, everything about his servants is already written in the Old Testament. Okay, Every time he's doing the parable, it's already in the Old Testament. That's your challenge. If I can tell you that as plainly as I just did, it is a gift for you to go and start noticing the parables and then take what Yeshua said and he lightens it up about what they what the prophets already said and then and then you will it will bring understanding to you and that's your joy okay because if you can hear it and you will even if you it takes some, hey listen i read the bible let's let's say a thousand times i'm still learning every time i read it okay i just read ezekiel I haven't read it in two years about, I haven't, well, some of it I have, but you know, I was going through it, just listening to it as a story. And I was seeing a whole bunch of stuff I never saw before because it, it really hadn't happened yet. Now it's happening even more. So please forgive my voice. I'm struggling. I'm trying to do it. I, I just feel terrible not doing videos because I just want people to be saved and to see the truth. So take don't take what I'm saying and say, oh, Mark, Mark said this, Mark said that. No, go read it, and then you can say it yourself. It's right there. It's true. And then you, you eat the word of God yourself. I ate it, and then because it was so good, I'm giving it to you. That's all I'm doing. So when you take scripture and you read it line upon line, you start to discover when Yeshua says something, and, 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 and God says this through Moses, and then Ezekiel says something, just hear it out, and then you'll understand what's going on, even with your own self. Because, brothers and sisters, you're written in the book all over the place. <clears throat> the evil pe people are written in here, and the, and the chosen people are written in here. In order to reach this chosen people, it's through the foolishness of preaching, and by hearing and faith is how you learn these things. you got to hear it. And then you believe it, and then you, you keep going, and you keep getting sanctified in the Word of God. You know? That's why a lot of people right now are doing the feasts and everything like that, because they came to a certain point, and they came to a certain point, and they stopped their ears from hearing, and they blessed themselves, thinking that they got it made in the shade, and they stopped, and then they're not telling the truth, and then one of the biggest things they're not doing is fulfilling the royal law, which... We have an obligation because we were so stupid, our forefathers, and we and it's going to tell us in here, in this chapter, and when Christ came, he elevated, <clears throat> he elevated the commandment to understand the Bible, which is to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and let the Holy Spirit is the one who's opening up ears. It's not you, it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit. We're his servants, okay? You enter into the servanthood. So let's check this out. I'll read instead of talking or I'm going to lose my voice. Okay. You shall make. This is, this is just so clear, right? You shall make. Okay. You shall. Ye shall make you no idols. But in brackets it says just to accept a Christmas tree. You can do that. No, it doesn't say that. You shall make no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up any standing image. No standing image. Neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land. Okay, this is, this is important too. There's a, there's a, it's blasphemy, you know, 
the Beth Yeshua has a, a praying wall erected so people can come and bow down to that wall. And then yet they're preaching sermons against the Christians doing Christmas. Like take the log out of your eye. Take the big chunk of stone out of your eye. There was a man who preached against the Christians for doing Christmas and Easter, and I knew him, and he was supposed to preach in that church about the two houses of Israel because they've gone very much in error in Beth Yeshua, and he cowered out and wouldn't do it. So he took the easy road to keep his seat in the synagogue and preached against Christmas. And then later on, he got, the Lord's punishment came on to him. Now he's got a bunch of egg on his face. Hopefully he pulls out of that. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments to do them, then I will give you rain in due season. And the land shall yield her, her increase and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time and you shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. And I will, and keep, please keep in mind when, when we're, when we're listening to this, remember these, some of these things are symbolic, even they, the, the, the physical rep represents the spiritual. So the wine and the flesh is the word of God, but it's also, we need to eat food and we want um, there to be, if you want your, you want a stock of wine in your house, okay? And then you want enough seed left over to plant more in, in all things, right? So that's what it's talking about. You, but what's, why do you want to plant more? You want to bring more to truth and stuff like that. That's the way you should look at things. Like the way God talks is, is, is both the reality of what we need, but what we really need is the spiritual con construct of the scriptures in our own lives. To see is to believe. And when you like to when you see it in the scriptures, you can believe it by hearing. That's why we heal the deaf and we and we heal the blind and the lame, those who are supposed to be working and they won't work. You gotta heal them. You gotta light a fire under their buttocks, you know, through the, the fear of the Lord. What does it say? You know, it's not just the Ten Commandments because that other elevated commandment to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind and to love your neighbor as yourself means that you're going to understand what the Word of God says and then you're going to go tell the people what the Word of God says. And then when they really see it, then they're going to help you find more like when you're convicted to go and reach out and find people, which is exactly what I'm doing, then I'm trying to convict you to do the same thing. That's how you fulfill the royal law. And that's what Christ elevated. And he says he'll be with you. So where is your faith? Where is your faith? Did you not believe him? Are you? And that's what happens with pride. Pride is an ugly, uh, that, and that has to do with covetousness. You know, and, and so ultimately a lot of people really aren't keeping the covenant because they can't, they can't, and they're, because they're not, they can't love God with all their heart, soul, and mind if they stop their ears from hearing, you know, because those two commandments are the commandments that, how do you put it? Okay, let's look at it like this. If you're 16 years old, and you just get your driver's license, you're not going to be able to drive the car the same way Mario Andretti drives a race car. Mario Andretti has all the fruit. That's why he can race and rip through the track, right? But a kid who just got his license is not going to be at the same level. So with lots of practice and hard work in the Word of God, you start to bear fruit, and then you become... Um, very talented in the word of God. And that's what he expects of us. But he doesn't expect you to be Mario Andretti when you first open the book. You know, that's why the tree is dunged on the fourth year. And if it doesn't bear fruit, then that fruit is the knowledge of God. Because there's more instructions in this book, but they're they're amazing. It's not to it's not to hinder you, it's to show you when people can hear the word of God, they get excited when they see things. 
It's amazing. And it does have, like, you're not supposed to speak evil against the government. Why? Because God wants to protect you. He's saying, if you keep your mouth shut and you don't speak evil against the government, I'm going to put my hand around you and keep you safe. That's the promise. But see, people, because they covet after their own opinion and they got to shout because they're angry, they don't got forgiveness in their heart. They don't know how to listen. And that's their stupidity because they won't take the instruction of God. See, the covenant produces this good fruit. So what we're sitting here saying, well, I, I don't have to get involved. I just sit back and find my brothers and sisters and let the world do its thing. It's going down in the toilet and we're going to be saved out of it. And if we tell our brothers and sisters to do the same thing, then they're going to be saved out of it. And they're going to give you a big hug when they're in the kingdom because they're going to see the destruction firsthand, what happens to the rest of the world. And that's what wisdom comes from, not of yourself, of God. <coughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. <coughs> All right. And I will give peace in the land and you shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And you shall cause your enemies, and they shall fall by, fall before you by the sword. Now, did you notice he's talking about beasts and your enemies and the sword? Because the, the evil beasts are the Gentiles. Okay? They're often referred to that. When Paul or Peter had his vision... And it was the unclean and the clean. He was talking about Gentiles. Gentiles were now made clean. Well, guess why? Because the northern kingdom of Israel did not return at the time Yeshua came. And so the Gentiles received salvation, which is to follow the covenant, a sojourner being grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. And it's also because they're going to be devoured by the Gentiles. So the Gentiles are going to conquer Israel each year that they're in their dispersion. They're going to more and more become Gentiles as they interbreed with each other. They're scattered to the four corners and they've lost their identity. And that's in Deuteronomy as well. I'm going to cause your name to cease from existence among men. This is the promise right here as well. Okay. And if you shall, and I, and ye shall cause your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall cause a hundred, or chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you, <clears throat> and you shall eat old store, and bring forth old because of of the new and I will set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhor you and I will walk among you and will be your God and you shall be my people I am the Lord your God which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt and you should that you should uh, not be their bondmen for I have broken the bands of your yoke <coughs> and made you go upright but if you will not hearken unto me and I and will not do all these commandments and if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor, abhor my judgments, so that you will not do my commandments, but that you break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague <clears throat> that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain, and your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when none pursueth you. And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Seven times more. Okay, so it's telling you right here, there is an appointed time of judgment. But if they don't hearken at that time, seven times will there be punishment. Let's keep reading. And I will break, I will break the pride of your power and I will make <coughs> your heaven as iron and your earth as brass and your strength shall be spent 
in vain, and your land shall not yield or increase, neither shall the trees of the, the land yield their fruits. And if you walk contrary unto me, will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. And I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number and your highways shall be desolate. And if you will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then I will also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. When he says something three times in a row, he's not joking. That's the way God works. If you don't listen to him, and the reason why is because if if you, the individual, decide to go break the Ten Commandments and tell me to do the same thing, and then I do it, and then I go tell someone else, oh yeah, don't worry about it. <coughs> we don't have to go, we don't have to keep the Sabbath holy. That's old. Let's get the new iPhone. Always looking for some new thing. You know, that's the way people are. Superstitious, not not believing in God. Not believing in his ways and not ours. His ways are higher. That's Isaiah 55. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when you are gathered together and within your cities, I will, I will send pestilence among you and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven and they shall deliver you, your bread, again by weight, and you shall eat and not be satisfied. Look at that as the word of God. And look at that as the 10 women being the, the 10 tribes that were scattered. And if you will not, for all this, hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sin. Oh, now we got it four times in a row. He brings this up. And you shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters shall eat you. And I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols and my soul shall abhor you. Seven times. So this is, now he's talking at the end of the seven times. This, the plot's thickening here. Wait till you read, I'm going to read the next part of this. Not this chapter, but where Ezekiel talks about this. And I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries to desolation, and I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors. That's talking about your prayers. I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it, and I will scatter you among the heathen. And I will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths as long as it lies desolate, and you shall and and ye be in your enemy's land, even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. As long as it lies desolate, it shall rest, because I did because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when you dwelt upon it. And upon them <coughs> that are left alive of you, I will send faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies, and the sound of the shaken leaf shall cease, chase them, and they shall flee as fleeing, and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when not pers when none pursueth, and they shall fall one upon another, and as it were before a sword when none pursueth, and, and you shall have no power to stand before your enemies, and you shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up, and they that are left of you shall pine away in, the, in their iniquity in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall, shall they pine away with them. If they, now listen, here we go. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, with their trespass against, which they trespassed against me and, and that they, they have walked contrary unto me <clears throat> and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then <clears throat> their uncircumcised heart be humbled and they 
then accept the punishment of their iniquity, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob. So this is after the punishment. After the seven times punishment, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob and also the covenant with Isaac and the covenant with Abraham will I remember and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbath while she lieth desolate without them and they shall accept shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity because even because even because they despise my judgments and because their soul abhorred my statutes and yet for all this when when they be in the land of their enemies i will not cast them away neither will i abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them for i am the lord their god but i will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen that I might be their God, I am the Lord. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Okay. Deuteronomy 28 is the same thing. I believe it's 28, maybe it's 29, I can't remember but it's there too. And that is the second instruction of God to Moses for when the return of Israel comes. And he says, I'll even leave you a few in number in the last days and I will return you. And that's why in the other prophecies it says there's only going to be few men in, in all over the, the world speaking upright words. Okay? There's, there's tons of prophecy to all of this stuff. I just flipped to Isaiah... Uh, 64, 65, 66, this is all about the return. There's a dynamic. It's about the evil servants and the good servants. What I'm doing is going to Ezekiel <clears throat> chapter 4 about the watchman. And Ezekiel 1 is about the 144,000. Ezekiel 2 and 3 is about these watchmen that are going to rise up and tell you to repent, which has to happen, part of the prophecy. And then chapter 4 is explaining, now, Ezekiel goes to the northern kingdom. Um, they were already scattered at that time for about, I think, I'll just say around 100, 150 years. He went and he prophesied to them so that they would spread the word through the northern kingdom of Israel um, so that they knew about their punishment. Okay, here's their punishment. Chapter 4. Thou also, son of man, take thee a, a tile and lay it before thee <clears throat> and portray upon the city, even Jerusalem, and lay siege against it and build a fort against it and cast a mount against it. Set the camp also against it and set battering rams against it round about. Moreover, take thou unto thee an iron pan and set it for a wall between thee and the city and set thy face against it and it shall be besieged. And thou shalt lay siege against it. This shall be a sign. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Okay, that's interesting, because this this is when this is what happened back then. But it's a foreshadow to the northern kingdom of Israel when they return. That when this happens in reality, it will be a sign to the northern kingdom of Israel. Lie thou upon thy left side. Listen to this. Lie thou upon the left side and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel. Actually, this might be a sign to them at the time because they were already dispersed. But I believe it is also a sign to us because when you get to Ezekiel 20, you're going to see that it's again mentioned as they're returning to the border and there's this purging out in, the, in, in Israel as they're going through the second exodus that... Jerusalem gets destroyed and it's assigned to Israel, the northern kingdom, as they're coming back. Okay, just keeping that knowledge, understand that that's what's written. Okay, this, this, this little bit's repeated in Ezekiel 20. Lie, lie thou also on thy left side the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it according to the number of the days that thou shalt lay upon Upon it thou shalt bear their iniquity, for I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity according to the number of the days, three hundred and ninety days 
so shall thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah. Forty days, two different houses. Therefore thou shalt set thy face towards the siege of Jerusalem, and thy arm shall be uncovered, and thou shalt prophesy against it. And behold, I will lay bands upon thee, and thou shalt not turn thee from one side to another till thou hast ended the days of thy siege. Take, take thou also unto thee wheat and barley, beans and lentils, and um, mill, millet and finches, and put them in one vessel, and make thee bread thereof according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon thy side. 390 days shalt thou eat thereof. And thy meat, which thou shalt eat, shall be by weight 20 shekels a, a day. From, <clears throat> from time to time thou shalt eat it. Thou shalt drink also water by measure. The sixth part of a hen from time to time shall you drink. And thou shalt eat, eat it as barley cakes, and thou shalt bake it with dung, that cometh from man in their sight. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whether will I drive them. And that's really talking about the doctrine. Okay? The de defiled bread, not the truth. Okay? Now, that th now we'll just keep reading, then I'll explain. Then said I, O oh Lord, behold, my soul hath not been polluted, for thou, from my youth even till now, I have not eaten that which dieth of itself or is torn to pieces, neither came there abominable flesh into my mouth. Do you see that? Even? Then he, shall, then he said unto me, Lo, I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung, and thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem and they shall eat bread by weight and with care and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment that they, they, that they may want bread and, and water and be astonished one with another and consume away for their iniquity. So when he went for the house of Judah on his, on his right side, I think it said, right? then that was for 40 days and each day for a year. So that happened, it's finished for, the, for them, at least for a portion of them that returned. And you can read that in, in um, chapter four, Ezekiel. So that's why you guys gotta, when you understand the watchman and put it into perspective, the old to the new and how it's gonna happen and how this is going on, it's happening right in front of your face, you know? Ezekiel 1 starts talking about the four horsemen and the 144,000. Ezekiel 2 and 3 is warning them to wake up. Chapter 4 is telling you the story of their punishment and then bringing it together with Leviticus 26 that 390 years was their punishment, but they did not return just like Leviticus 26 said. God told them a long time ago, but you're not going to return. So I'm going to punish you seven times. Seven times 390 years is 2,730 years, and they were scattered in 722 BC. You do the math. They didn't return when Messiah came because he has given them a second chance there even. They were, God was saying, okay, I'll send my Messiah now, but he knew they weren't going to return. So it's not like he just did it so that he, he showed you that he did it. They could have returned, and some did. But like there was a woman of Asher at the temple, Asher's from the Northern Kingdom. I, I, you know, it's, it's strong um, for me. I have no doubt that the 12 apostles were not all Jews, by the way. They were from the Galilee of the Gentiles, most of them. So I bet you, I, because they judge each 12 of the tribes, so they were probably one of each tribe. And, and Yeshua says, I picked you 12, didn't I? So there was a lot of them, they were coming, they, they, some people knew, it's just like right now. We know what's going on, some of us, and we're sitting there just like the apostles. And then, and then, and then John the Baptist was preaching about this, making the path straight for the Lord, teaching the Ten Commandments, baptizing into the, the covenant at Horeb. That's what he was doing. 
but the apostate church isn't listening to that. You can show them plain and Jane right there, the last chapter of the Old Testament, and they just absolutely refuse what John the Baptist did to pave the path straight for the Lord. It's just ridiculous. It's blatant. It, like they think they have no faith. They are so full of their own self righteousness, and they are pots destined for destruction. This is the generation of God's wrath. And this generation will not pass away until all these things be fulfilled. That's when Judah returns. When Judah returns, it's a sign to us. And that, that's the Psalm 90, 10. Really, Psalm 90 is the prophecy of a generation and 10 years in tribulation. Don't listen to all that nonsense from apostate churches saying that the time of Jacob's trouble seven years or 14 years, some will say, and stuff like that. No. No, it's 10 years. There's the birth pangs. That's the leading up until the great tribulation, which is 3.5 years. That's, that's what's, what's really going to go down. Because the woman, which is the elect, this is Israel. They're, they're, the difference between Jacob and the house of Israel is that Jacob will consist of 12 tribes that are the kings. They are the servants. They are the bond servants. They are repentant to the point where they have no guile on their mouth and they're sanctified in the word and they're the ones that will know the word and then the other ones that hear them are the are the elect of Israel because God said he, he's going to pour out and not just that there's more to it there's there's salvation for people that that aren't even going to repent but that's because of the servants because the servants understand the word of God and they do these things and there is people going to be saved without even repentance. But believe you me, during the second exodus, they will be repenting. And if they don't, they're going to be purged out. That's how the story ends. And the Christian church and the Jewish church is not telling us this story. Some of them are. I shouldn't say, you know, some of them are, but not very many. As you can see in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, read from verse 18, it will not be many. Same thing with the ascension of Isaiah chapter 3 verses 25 to 31 or whatever it is there. You'll see that as well. Not very many are going to be telling the truth. And that's really, it's egg on everybody's face right here. You should catch on to that. It's because all of us spent our lives not listening to the word of God and going about to do whatever pleased us in our own vanities. All of us. And, and God is not happy at any of us for doing that. <clears throat> this is why it's not going to be an easy time. You think it's easy for me to wake up? Well, it's not going to be easy for you to wake up either. It takes discipline. It takes trust. It takes believing the word of God. It takes repentance. It takes um, uh, learning what he's instructing us and learning prophecy and learning that the finite details of what you and I are going to do, whether it be good or evil, is already written in this book. Don't go to the right and don't go to the left. Stay down that middle road. That's why I promote that movie or that book, uh, Little Pilgrim's Progress. They made a, a cartoon about it, which isn't, isn't too bad. But it is. It's talking about our journey right now. And that doesn't surprise me one bit that 300 years ago, the man had that, this vision and wrote it in a book because it's exactly what's going on right now once you understand the prophecies about going to the right and going to the left. You know, going to the to the to to the legalism or going to the lawlessness. It's you got to stay down the middle. <clears throat> That's why I, you know, like people need to understand the unjust steward. But the point I'm trying to make here is that back is from 722 BC, which is a known fact in history, that the the um, that's when the Northern Kingdom was consumed by the Assyrian, and then later on. Later on is when Judah was, cons was cons not consumed, but conquered by uh, Babylon. But the Assyrian booted the northern kingdom of Israel out to the north country. And by the time Yeshua was on the earth, um, or shortly thereafter, Josephus, Flavius Josephus, wrote about the northern kingdom of Israel and how they were above either the Black or Caspian Sea, by the millions up there. But what happened? They started fighting the Huns, and then they started fighting Rome, and they were back and forth and back and forth, and there's probably many divisions between them 
and then they became these different groups of people and they just fought and fought and fought. And even in the time of Paul, there was a bunch of them up in Spain. There was a bunch of them up in Britain. They were, they were, they were scattered. They were being scattered for a long time. The tribe of Dan escaped the, 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 the Assyrian captivity and they, they just went wherever they went, right? And, and that's why I say Dan is not mentioned in the 144,000 because he didn't accept his punishment. So there's, there's that. I don't know how it's going to fully uh, equate in the end, but they're not in the 144,000, you know, and that, that's, that's the reason because when people are rebellious against the punishment that comes to them, although it was the tribe of Dan that initiated all the pagan rituals to begin with. And it really does remind me of the hireling. Like they were made judges and the hireling is just a hireling. And he's the one leading the way to, to do these. This is talking about Pastor Bob is teaching all these people. It's okay to do Christmas and Easter. This Paul Bagley guy just disgusts me. You know, we're supposed to be disgusted at this, by the way, because the sign that we're rising up is, is something that, if you know me, is repeated over and over again on my channel. But... When when Paul's talking about this very thing, the return of the northern kingdom of Israel in Romans 9, 10, and 11. But they can't hear it. I can't read it all because my voice is about to, to die here. But I'm just going to remind you to put it into, into perspective on the, you know, what I just read to you. Um, but did not Israel know, first Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation will I anger you. And this is about the provoking of his sons and daughters that are going to rise up in the last days, which are people spoken of all through Isaiah, through Ezekiel, like through the whole book, that that's, this is how it's going to go down. And that's why, and I mean, if you, if you say to yourself, you got to understand there's little verses like this. I'll tell you, like, you got to think about, and I don't fully know this, but you got to think about things like the, the woman, there's, there's a two women, one is married and one is not. Okay. This is, this is in Galatians, but it's old Testament stuff. It's in Isaiah and it goes all the way back to Abraham. And the, we just read it, the promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Right. The covenant, this is what's going on. And the, the unmarried woman is under sacrificial law. And here's a point I want you guys to notice that's kind of wow. You know that they received by a verbal agreement at Mount Horeb, which is 10 miles away from Mount Sinai, okay? The Ten Commandments, they received it and he added no more. It's right there in Deuteronomy 5 and 18. Those are two very important chapters to read together. And... They go to Mount Sinai, which is a 10-mile journey, and then they get it written in stone. But what did God say? Don't touch the mountain. Anybody who touches the mountain will die. Well, the mountain represents sacrificial law. That's why he said, don't touch the mountain. That's why he says, no, don't go to circumcision. That was added. That was added because of transgression. So what happened was the Israelites were given a taste of what Horeb is going to, or what... Um, Hagar, the children of that will not reign with the, the children of the promise. The children of Hagar, the unmarried wife, will not reign with the ch children of the married wife. And this is talking to the, really, it's talking to the apostate church and the people in Judah that are going to the letter of, lo of the law. Okay? You got to understand that because they're not entering into the covenant by faith. That's the point. It's so easy. I, it takes a lot of studying. And remember, like when, when I say that, he appointed me to do this because the whole church is apostate. So he took his time with me and he showed me all the great things of his word to tell other people. It's that easy. His yoke is easy. His burden's light. You follow the covenants of promise and you don't want to be touching the mountain. Don't go and touch that mountain. Otherwise, you're under the law. You get it? The covenant was given where the life-giving water was. They received that covenant. God handed it down to them to keep them off of Mount Sinai. 
Don't touch the mountain. Because any, any man or beast that touches that mountain will die. That's sacrificial law. That's what it represented. And it, you can see that in, in um, Galatians chapter 4. The children of New Jerusalem, the city above, are going to obey the Ten Commandments. That's the covenant. And those who don't obey the Ten Commandments by faith are going to either go to the letter of the law or they're going to do the evil things that are written in the law that you're not to do. <clears throat> That's why you need to be born again. If you're born again, you're under that covenant and you remain under that covenant and you allow the Holy Spirit to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Remain in the covenant. Remain in him and he will remain in you. And always be confessing your sins. Don't judge people by the flesh, which means don't judge them by the sacrificial law. You judge by faith in the covenant. That's what Christ restored or refreshed until the rest restoration of all things. And that's what he's saying. The covenant, people will argue and say, oh, we're under the new covenant. Yeah, you are. The new means the refreshing and it's all prophesied through the Old Testament what he's going to do. So what they do is they, they remain under sacrificial law because their ears will not hear. Even if they're not, when it's a sacrificial law is remaining under the punishment, even though they're holy, because they're holier than thou in the Christian church, they need to repent. And they're only going to repent as if we tell them the truth and they have ears to hear. They may not hear, they may hear later on when they're in tribulation. At that point, then they'll say, oh no, and then they'll repent. But that's why we tell them now, so when it happens, they will know. That's why Ezekiel right here, even. Well, the last verse of Ezekiel 33 is all about the watchman raising up in the last days, right? I read this to people all the time because they are always doing it. Like they're always, always doing this. I, I've, I've been doing this for like five years. I see it every single day almost. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people are sitting talking against thee by the walls and the doors of the houses and speak one to another, every one to his brother saying, come pray you and let's hear the word of the Lord that cometh forth, or the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as a people comes and they sit before thy feet or they sit before thee as a people as a peep, as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them, for with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goes after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song, one of one that has a pleasant voice that can play well on an instrument, for they hear thy words, but they do them not. This is all about the 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 watchmen are the same thing as in David's army, they go and they play the instruments before the army and then the army follows them. This is why the harpers were, are going to harp in Revelation. And then the, the 144,000 are going to sing the song, but the harpers do the harping. That's what this is talking about. And when this comes to pass, lo, it will come, they shall know that a prophet had been among them. Hey, the prophets are already done though. The prophets of old already did all the work. And what we're supposed to do is enter into the work. Look at this. I was going to do a video about this, and then somebody provoked me to do a video about what I'm doing now. But this is what I wanted to do a video about because of guys like Paul Bagley and, and Barry Scarborough. And there's a bunch of them out there. And they're just, they're just, this is who they are. And when I read this myself, I was completely convicted and said, no, Lord, I want nothing to do with that. Because when he asked me to be a watchman, I agreed to it, but I had no idea what it was, like I've told you, some of you. But this is the conviction right here. All ye beasts of the field come to devour. Yea, all ye beasts of the forest, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs that cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. They are shepherds that cannot understand and they all look to their own way, everyone for his gain from his quarter. Come ye and say, I will fetch wine and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. 
and tomorrow shall be as this day and much more abundant. That's exactly what you hear going on in the churches. I went to a pastor and it has to do with these guys. It has to do with the evil servants. It has to do with everybody who is not fulfilling the royal law. Today will be as tomorrow. That I went to this pastor that was the pastor of my mom's church and I said, I won't use his name, but I said, I just called him, you know, whatever. And I said, and at the time I said Jesus because I didn't know his name was Yeshua because this was when, this was right at the beginning when the Messiah spoke to me or when the Holy Spirit or the Father, the, I don't know, which, which spoke to me. They are both supping with you. The Father and the Son will sup with you. The Holy Spirit, but however you want me to say it, the Lord spoke to me and asked me when I asked for the truth and the beginning days when this happened, I cried out for the truth and he said, are you ready to listen? And I heard that as clear as I just said it to you, but it was within me, within my heart. But it was like, I don't know, you know, when you plug your ears and you can hear yourself inside, that's some, it was something like that. And then, and it was, I was awestruck, but I said, yes, Lord, I knew it was him because it was the same voice that was talking to me before, but this time I finally accepted it was God speaking to me. But at that time, I didn't know much, except for what I learned in the church for 38 years. But I went to the pastor and I told him that the Lord is returning soon and he started laughing at me. Yeah, they've been saying that forever. Well, like, do you see? Of course they've been saying that forever, but he doesn't. We understand that because they're a bunch of apostate people. That ha There's no truth in them. But you can tell the signs of the skies and you cannot tell the season you live in. Oh, you hypocrites. You see, Yeshua, Yeshua and the guys like Paul Bagley, they're all they're doing is warning you about what they see in the world but nothing to do with repentance, whatever. They're dumb dogs that don't know how to bark. They don't even know the word. They don't, when you go and read everything about these, they're self-proclaimed watchmen as I've been called myself. But the watchmen, watchmen do what the Bible says they're gonna do. You know? That's what they do. It, what is, when you look at the warning about the watchmen, I tell you something, this is kind of scary for them because if you don't tell people to repent and you've been appointed to be a watchman, if that's the case with these guys, because I know I was, I was asked by, by God to, if I would be, he said, will you be? He asked me if I would be. And I said, yes. And I said immediately, but what, what does that mean? I don't know. What is a watchman? I didn't know what it was. It sounded kind of Jehovah witness to me or something, you know, but that's what, I started, he started showing me what it was. And you have to tell the people to repent. And it all goes back to the original story of why the Northern Kingdom, think about it like this. Why did the Northern Kingdom get cut out? Because they did Christmas. So if they turn and repent, he will forgive them after the 2,730 years. So what, the 2,730 years is over now, but everybody's doing Christmas. But that's what they were supposed to originally repent from. Do you see how dumb people are? That's what got them kicked out in the first place. So now, now that they that now that the twenty seven hundred and thirty year um, curse is over and they're allowed to return, which is the prophecy, they're going to start springing up like grass. They're going to start talking often one to another, and a book of remembrance was written about them. That's what it's talking about. So. Now they don't have to repent from Christmas and Easter. That's how dumb the church is. The prophecy was for 2,730 years. For them to come to repentance, admit what their fathers did, confess their sins, come to repentance, get into covenant with him. And now all of a sudden they don't because the Christian church, we are already told what the Christian church, the it says the whole world will be deceived, even the very elect, if it were possible. But it's not possible because that's the rising up of, of the of the the of Jacob and Israel. And it'll be the whole house of Israel. There's going to be a portion of Judah that is not like the rest of Judah. 
there is prophesied an evil family of Judah as well. And that evil family of Judah is casting stumbling blocks over you and I who are returning from the northern kingdom scattered to the north country and to every country who speak English. They all speak the same language. <coughs> it's, that's Ezekiel 2 and 3. It's not a hard speech. That's why these word police that are out there are just cast in stumbling blocks. They're going to be appointed as evil servants. There's a lot of talk about different things that are stumbling blocks. These guys that are imposing the feasts, evil servants, the ones that are imposing them, people imposing the calendar, stumbling blocks. What's going to be said to them? They're not the unjust steward. Quickly write a check for half. What does that mean? They were unjust with their inheritance. It's a reflection. They were also unjust with telling the truth because they weren't coming to the completion of what's being said. They're robbing the righteous judgment. Rather, they were casting stumbling blocks, which is a reflection of the old, is what's going on now. And they got to come to that place and become unjust stewards and say, whoa, we're the prodigal son, we're servants. We need to just tell the people quickly, repent, follow the covenants and start fulfilling the royal log, stay in the word of God and hear all these things. God will restore his feasts. God will restore his calendar. God will restore the pure language. And that's not what a lot of people are doing. Never mind, way on the left side, they're just telling you, they can see all the destruction, but they're telling you, they're promising you liberty and safety, but you're not gonna get it. If you follow those men, and that's also, that's what it's talking about. This is, um, this is Peter telling you about that. This is exactly what's going on. Peter was feeding the sheep, right? Feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. So Peter warned us what was going to happen, and it's happening. And he's just talking about what's in the Old Testament. So let's, let's hear it out so, while well, my voice is still working. But among them were false prophets also among the people Okay, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now for long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah and eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with the overthrow, making them an example unto those who should af who after should live ungodly. That was all about pride and fullness of bread, covetousness. That's all talking about America right now, you guys. And, and all of God's people are like this. And delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for the righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of the uncleanness and despise, go despise governments, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of, of uh, deities, wherein angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these are natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speaking e speak, speak evil of things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as them as they that count, count it pleasure to riot in the daytime, spots they are, blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. That's even, could be portraying even Christmas right there, as they feast with you, having eyes full of idol adultery. Idultery and adultery is the same thing. And that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, 
a heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam. What did he do? He caused the children of Israel to fornicate with foreign nations, thus doing their pagan witchcraft. The son of Bozar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. And he, he, look what he's doing. And he's just making merchandise of you guys. That's what Pastor Bob is doing. These, these teachers for hire. But, but was rebuked of his iniquity. <coughs> the dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. Like these are just talking about Christian people that are leading your churches. For when they, when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who lived in error. Those who were clean escaped. He's prophesying. He's telling you stuff in the Old Testament already. That's why he was feeding the sheep. That's what people don't get. They, this is why Peter told you that they're going to right here in chapter 3, verses 15, 16, 17. An account that the long suffering of our Lord Yeshua is salvation, even as our beloved brother also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Same thing. As also... In all his epistles, speaking them, speaking in them these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned, so understand that this is the way, which those that are unlearned in the Old Testament and unstable rest as they do the other scriptures unto, your own, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, lest you also, being lit, led away with error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. This is not a joke. That's why, and then the Messiah told you, what's the sign of the end, the apostles ask him. Many are going to come in his authority, claiming that he's the Messiah, and will deceive many. And that's because... We've all, but those who were clean escaped. Okay? That's why he raises up watchmen. You don't believe I'm a watchman? Then you got a problem. But I suggest if you go and read your Bible about every single thing about watchmen and notice even in Zechariah chapter 1 that the myrtle trees are going to spring up from amongst the briars and thorns. The briars and thorns, they're choked out by, by the cares and the lusts of this world. That's a briar and a thorn. And the watchmen are surrounded by briars and thorns. It's in every single account almost of the watchmen being surrounded by briars and thorns. Briars and thorns. The briars and thorns are you people. And you need to change and stop with the covetousness because it's the commandment. And I'm telling you, all these guys going to the right, teaching people to even do the feasts, I, I, I'm pretty sure that they struggle with covetousness and that's why they cannot hear. So be warned, learn what the unjust steward is. There's, there's, I've, I've explained it in two different ways because it has a context. It takes what they did in the old and relates it to the new. What's happening right now. There's a reason the unjust steward says, write a check for half because God already made it super easy for us to come in this dispensation because he knows the dirty toilet bowl that we live in. That's why he says, I'm going to restore these things. You just obey my voice. What did I tell you in this particular generation to do? That's what he told you to do. It's like this. Judah, quickly write a check for 80%. Northern Kingdom of Israel, quickly write a check for half. Look at it that way. We were t I was talking to a good brother, uh, two good brothers yesterday and, and a sister. and we were, That's the way it looks like, you know. Like it, 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 Judah's already returned, so they got so, some other things they're supposed to get cleaned up. But the northern kingdom of Israel has not returned yet. The prophecy is not finished being fulfilled. 
That's why so many people are rising up right now to keep the Ten Commandments. But a lot of people are going to the right and they're becoming legalistic. Watch the Little Pilgrim's Progress and tell me if you cannot see the prophetic and that God's hand was in that Puritan's life when he's sitting in prison being persecuted for his faith and wrote the Little Pilgrim's Progress. There's prophetic to that. And guys are going to the right, to the left, all different ways they can stumble off the narrow path looking for, for, for to get that burden off their, off their back, feel, feeling confident in their salvation, but they're going in all different directions and they're not listening to the word of God. It, the prophecy, don't despise prophesyings in the last days, you guys. It means understand what the prophets have already said. I think somebody had a question there. A cop. Um, while walking truth, um, he asked, he or she, I'm sorry, are, are these pastors doing this willingly or out of ignorance? I'm gonna, I, I can't give you a number. I don't think they all are doing it out of, um, let's put it this way. There's probably about a hundred percent chance that they all know we are rising up and keeping the covenant. Okay. Let's put it that way. So if they all know they're being rebellious because it's not like, it's not like the, the murmuring and the, and the arguing and the rebuking has been going on. You see, it's been going on throughout our nation. They're hearing it, but they're rejecting it. So what is the answer to that question? Now, are some people deliberate? I would say, yeah, I would say a hundred percent. Yeah. You know, you got your Jesuits, your Jesuits got their Freemasons, you know, all that secret society stuff is 100% in the churches being, and it, you know, that's why I say, if you want to go have a look at this, there's a guy named Todd, Todd John, he's been killed, but he warned the church about what the Illuminati was going to do to the churches back in the early fifties or sixties and how they were going to remove the hymn book. And they has got that charismatic movement going and put the songs that they sing today is all because of what the Illuminati did. They infiltrated the church in that, that particular, his testimony tells you that, but he probably got killed for even telling the people that. So, but that's what happened. Then they ended up happening and the churches didn't pay attention to that. So the, the goal of the Freemasons it's, it's in their things to do list is once you become a member, you have to enter in, even if your faith isn't in that church, whatever's popular, you're supposed to become a member of that church. Well, when they become a member of that church and you listen to the doctrine that the Freemasons are, is that, that you don't, you don't impose your, your religious beliefs on anybody. So that kind of that kind of lack of rebuke in the church is being infiltrated in that way. So then that's why you got this, all this gentleness nonsense going on. And they just, they do everything that they do is based on looking good in front of man on doing charitable events. And that's the where, where the church, that's the, where the church, you know, goes in that direction, you know, instead of feeding the word of God, they're sitting there making, thinking that they're even, it says you're not saved by your works, but they're sitting there giving money to, to this and bragging about it, letting the right hand know what the left hand's doing even. But ultimately, they're only giving what's left over. The, the churches are filled with money and there's still world hunger in the, in, in, in the world. They, they really don't care. They just make it look like they care. Just see, if, they, if you guys give them a million dollars, they'll take a hundred grand and, and give it to, to the poor, we'll say, or maybe not even so much, but the rest of it will go into their pocket. It's just like I was, I watched a thing a ways ago and I don't know how true it is, but I'll just tell you that, that there was some woman in charge of Red Cross. She was like the top, top dog and she was getting paid like $475,000 a year to run Red Cross. Does that make sense to you? Like, do you need to make $475,000 a year to run a charitable organization? That's, it's not about really caring about people. It's about, that's, it's all, these all, they're all just, um, I don't know. They're, they're, they're all dishonest, you know? 
It is. It's all dishonesty. So, and the churches are just as bad. I'm not, I'm not against giving to people, but if you guys have a heart for people, then go on the, go out in the winter, or go to the places where people are struggling and don't have, have, um, don't have food as easily available. They don't, they live in a tent. There's things like that and go surprise them with a, a bag of groceries or something like that. Like, and then have a Bible inside that bag or something like that. If you got extra money to do those kinds of things, you, 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 it, it goes way better off, you know, you know, and then, and then preach the word to them. They're probably more likely to hear anyways, because they're the poor and the poor shall inherit the earth. They don't have the word of God. They're rejects, right? They're oppressed. They're the worst oppressed. When you really analyze what happened in our countries, you know, I'm not going to get into it because I don't want to make this long, but that's what I would do. Try to talk to them and say, you know, read this book because all the prophecies coming true, tell them that all the prophecies happening, if you, and tell them if you obey and you do what this book says, your eyes will be opened to greater things than you can imagine. Tell them that. That's what you should do. If you if you want to give money to to a church, it's just going to go into their into their sound system and and to their. I mean, for crying out loud, we were talking about this on the on the Sabbath, that like they they spend a lot of money on those Christmas trees in some of these mega churches, you know, and that's all your donations. That's all your donations, and it's all pagan. It's all Nimrod's penis that everybody's worshiping. And, oh, look at that huge penis with all the pretty lights on it. That's the way people should look at it. You know, it's just disgusting. But don't tell them that because they find that very, don't use that word. Oh, don't, don't, don't make us feel bad about our sin. Oh, you know, you're, you have a perverse mouth. You know, you have a perverse mind. Because that's what it's all about. You know, and you're, that's what they're doing. And they're causing the children to sin. They're causing the children to, to think that lying is okay. They're causing the children to be full of covetousness, pride, all this stuff. It ends in destruction. You know, next thing you know, children are going to be in their basement till they're 30 years old playing, you know, Xbox from age nine or 10 all the way to 30 years old and won't go get a job. Or does that already go on? You know? All right, guys. Talk to you later.